Okay, we've got a 200 series Land Cruiser here and we've just completed the Red Arc dual battery kit system install. It's got our battery located here, our BCDC kit's installed. The last part of the full kit is to install our accessory harness. So this is the harness we've got here. Comes with a seven metre cable of six mil twin and that's long enough to reach anywhere in the back of the vehicle. So we've designed it so that it runs through the driver's side firewall grommet and runs to the rear, but there's plenty of length there if you want the sockets on the passenger side in the rear, on the driver's side in the rear. We just cut it to length once we're down there and in the location we want our sockets to be in. So let's get stuck into the first step, which is getting our cable through this firewall. We'll show you how to get apart the trims inside and run it all the way to the rear. Okay, so our first step, a little bit of lubricant, WD-40 and just a pair of side cutters. What we're going to do is we'll just see this little spare grommet basically so this is the main firewall grommet going through the driver's side and this is a spare nipple to run accessories through so what we do basically is just nip the end off that with a pair of side cutters so there we go we've got the top off and then just by spraying a little bit of wd-40 around that hole and also on the end of our cable like so we're going to be able to push our cable through there so now that we've sprayed some wd-40 there it's also a good idea just with a sharp um, tool like a screwdriver just to pierce it initially oh that one's gone through quite easy actually and then grabbing the end of our seven meter cable we can start to push that through the hole with that lubricant it should just go straight through so this one's gone through really easy and once we've put a bit through, we can go ahead, pull apart the trims on the inside and find that cable and pull through the entire length. So let's go to the driver's seat area now. So we're now at the driver's seat area on the right hand side of the vehicle. We're gonna start by taking apart these trims. So firstly, the bottom one, up to here and then this kick panel right next to the accelerator panel now these these trims are only just clipped in so there's no screws there's nothing actually holding them in it's just a matter of getting our hands either side and propping up and you'll hear them release as we work our way down so i'll just start from this end i'll get my finger under here flexing a little bit sideways too might help see i've already released that one i've heard it so i'm just working my fingers down you can see that's coming off quite easily. Once I get to this end, I'm gonna try and pull this one down a little bit. So you can see it's little lug locating in there. So I'll just remove that lug. And I'll just sit that aside for now. So you can see we've opened up, this is where the main Toyota harness goes. So it's great, we can just follow this path that Toyota uses, cable tying our cable to it, and that'll run us all the way to the rear. Now that we've got this part out, it's just a matter of getting this kick panel off. And that's basically held on by these plastic clips here. And also a little plastic nut right next to the accelerator. Maybe a little bit hard to find, but basically this can just, we don't need a tool for it. It just always comes off by your finger. So that's it there. Just a little 10 mil plastic nut. So that's going onto a stud out of the body. So once we've got that off, it's just a matter of pushing this away from the vehicle. So I'm pushing this way. Like so. Sometimes, which what has just happened here as well, is one of these clips will stay in the body. So what we do there is just get a pair of side cutters or something to go in behind that section of the blue clip. We'll pop it out of the body and put it back into the foot right there. So I'll just grab a pair of side cutters and we'll sh I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so just with a pair of side cutters, just going in between those two layers, levering that away from the body, you can see I've grabbed it there. And once I've got it out, if I just reinsert that into the plastic housing, it's good and ready for us to reinsert at the end of the install. But for now, we just sit that aside. You can see that's given us good access. Now, what I'll be able to do now is up behind the bonnet release catch is where our firewall grommet comes through. So I'm just gonna reach up there now and I should be able to feel that end of that cable. Yep, there it is. I can 
just pull that down. The torch might even aid you in this if you're unsure of exactly where it is. Um, but you can see that's our cable now. So I, what I can do now is pull that all the way through. If it starts to get tight, there's nothing wrong with putting a little bit more lubrication on the cable in the engine bay and that'll just allow it to keep coming through freely. At the moment it's coming through. Starting to tighten up, so I'm just going to throw a little bit more lubrication on. Yeah, and there you go, it's coming way easy now. So pull that through until it stops. If we come back to the engine bay, we'll see so we've pulled our cable through to the inside, um, and you can see it's pulled right up to where the sleeving stops. So I'll just pull a bit out so you can see. On the end of this, we've got our sleeving, bit of heat shrink, and that heat shrink's designed to go in right into that hole and plug it up basically. Push that through until it's in the hole, like so. Gives us a good watertight seal and we've got enough sleeving to go through the engine bay and get us up to our auxiliary battery. Now we're not gonna make this connection yet. This is definitely the last thing we wanna do in the install is connect to this battery. And you'll notice that once we've sent the harness out, um, it's, a, it's labeled 12 volt sockets, but there's no fuse in it at the moment. That's in case you did do that. We don't want power down the back at this point. So basically the last thing we're gonna do is make this electrical connection and insert our fuse. So for now, we just leave this sitting um, in the battery bay and we'll continue to route our cable towards the back of the vehicle where our sockets are gonna go. So we're back in the driver's seat now. We've got our cable through to this area. It's time to start routing it towards the rear. There's two ways we can go about this. Um, you can see we've got plenty of room in this channel. There's heaps of room to run extra cables, which is great. Great thing about Toyotas. Um, we can just simply thread that through and just go grab it at each point and thread it all the way through. Or another little trick is these clips actually come apart. So you'll see there's two, an inner and an outer there holding a wedge. So if we flex that apart, we can just release that tab and that'll just allow us to lay it in there. Like this. So that simply being down just allows us to lay it in like that. So I'm just gonna clip that back down. And I don't usually cable tie it at this point. Basically, I get it all the way to where we want to be because it allows us to manipulate the cable and then we'll secure it into position. So now that we're at the center pillar of the vehicle, we want to basically take the trims apart at the rear doors and allow us to feed it through that center section. Now, this customer's already had his trims apart and he's doing other work. So he's actually removed this um, and he's got it at his house. So usually there would be a little plastic clip here that we just get in, release, and there's a little 10 mil screw there. So that's just something that you're gonna find on your vehicle. But once that screw is out, it's just similar to what we did in the front is just taking this trim off. So just gonna go under the floor mats, grab my hands either side, and just try and release that first one. Once that's done, just moving my way back, releasing. It's all just plastic clips once again. Other than that screw, there's nothing else holding it in. So you can see that's all come apart. One plastic clip in a hole there. And the rest of what we're just releasing, just so you know, is um, basically just these plastic bits going into there, being grabbed. Um, and that's all that really holds it in is just, just plastic. So now we're at this location and we've freed up this area. We can try and thread our cable from the front driver's section to the rear passenger section. Okay, so I'm at the driver's seat now. I'm just gonna flex this apart, thread through. There's a little gap here, right next to the channel for the cable. This may take a little bit of fiddling to get it through, but once we've found it, can feel it go through and I should, I think I've got enough now. If we go to the rear 
um, passenger seats, we'll find the cable at that location. So yep, here we are, it's popped out. This is our cable here, so I can just go and pull that excess all the way through. And then since there's only one here, I'm just gonna thread this one through. So there we go, now we've got the cable all the way from the engine bay to the back of the rear seats. Stop that. So the next part of our accessory harness that comes in the kit is pack of cable ties to secure the harness we've run down. And also the standard kit is your choice of any two sockets. So USB, cigarette, angle, merit, voltmeter, there's lots of different options there. So we're just gonna show you um, how to go about installing these sockets. Um, and also at this point of the install, we need to decide where we want our sockets. And there's no standard for that. Everybody's setup is a little bit different. This particular customer is installing drawers. So basically from here down is out of bounds. We can't install anything. It's got to be above there. Um, but we'll go through some of the popular spots of putting sockets into a vehicle like this. Um, and for today's purposes, we'll stick to the driver's side just to show the easiest way of getting sockets into the rear if you want to take it on yourself. Um, so one popular spot is if we look at this storage compartment here. So this, the customer has this cover, but basically it's the same as this. So there, there would be a lid here attached to that section. So this is a popular spot because it's nice and discreet. So once you pop that cover off, it exposes this storage compartment where a lot of people like to mount their sockets in there um, in whatever configuration, just because when it's all packed away, you can't tell that they're there. Nice and discreet. When you go away camping, you can pop that cover out and plug your sockets in. Um, but there's lots of options. Basically, all this panelling is all accessible from behind. So we can mount sockets in any kind of locations that we want. There's plenty of different options. Um, so what we're going to do is go about showing you how to get this apart. And before we go and drill any holes, we obviously want to get this panel off, make sure that there is nothing important under it or that's been installed under it. We don't want to drill through anything, obviously. So we want to make sure we're clear first. This one is one of the easiest spots once again, because we can tell that we're clear. We barely even have to take this panel off because we can feel right there. We've got full access through here. We can pretty easily get our cable from there to here without actually removing this panel. So it is one of the easiest installation spots. But in case you want, we're going to just going to show you how to remove this panel. So we'll get into that part of the installation now. So in order to remove this panel, if you want to mount your sockets here, um, just to give us good access and to check that we've got room behind, we can just pop that away from this end and flex it out a little bit. But if you want to be able to get more out of it, um, we've popped our seats forward. With a 14mm um, socket, we just release the seat belt mount there. It's just going to allow the plastic to come further away from the side of the vehicle. And this customer is already halfway through fitting um, drawers in his system, so he has taken that back trim off, um, but it's pretty much the same as the other trims that we've gone through in this area, just, just plastic clips and it'll just come off. So once we've got this seat belt out the way, sit that there. We can just go ahead and flex this away from the vehicle. So once again, it's all just plastic clips. So if we flex a little bit here, just so we can get our fingers in beside the glass. So you can hear them releasing as we work our way down. this end, another plastic clips down here, there we go, and there we go, you can see that's given us full access, we can see all the existing Toyota cabling to secure to, so we can really neaten up our harness and get it nice and secure. So this particular customer, he just wants a single fridge socket basically, just an angle socket, and he likes the fact that it's just gonna sit snug into there. 
So basically we're gonna, we're gonna mount our socket here in this case. Um, and so we're gonna drill our hole there. But like I was saying, wherever you wanna mount the dual sockets, just make sure we've got room. And that's the whole point, and that there's nothing behind these panels, and that's the whole point of taking this panel off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, look behind this panel. I can see that there's nothing in the way, and I'll flex this out so you can see. So I'm basically gonna be drilling here. So one thing I'm gonna to wanna to look out for today is that I don't drill right where this bracket is. So I want to come through somewhere here or here. Um, and I can see by sitting this back into position, I can see where this lines up and make sure that I'm not going to drill into any harness or seatbelt or airbags or anything like that, basically. So, and to make it even safer, I'm going to actually drill with this away from the side of the body. Um, but I know that there's nothing in the way, so I've checked that I'm safe to drill through this plastic. So I'll just go get a drill now. Okay, so I've got my position here check that there's nothing behind i'm just going to go ahead and drill my hole so there we go we're through and now we've already thrown our harness to here so in this case it's quite a simple short short run straight up to here so i'm just going to make sure i follow the electrical harness and come out through my hole pull our excess through so in this case we're going to have a lot of excess because we've gone in one of the shortest locations so I'll just pull that through but that's why we give the seven meters so if you did want to go to the other side um, there's plenty of room plenty of length on the cable Before we do go and cut that, um, it's probably a good idea to actually secure our harness now with our cable ties. And that could that's the case because if we've happened to pull that tight, it may have gone tight in the front. And if we start securing now, or we cut that off, we may not have enough length. So good idea before we cut that length, we'll start securing the harness. So we'll head back to the engine bay and work our way back to here securing. Okay, so using the cable ties supplied in the kit, we're going to go ahead and secure our harness, starting from the engine uh, from the engine bay battery towards the rear. So I'll start by putting a few cable ties around this harness in the engine bay. Now using our cutters, we just cut the tags off all the cable ties. Okay, so now that our harness is secured, we can go and cut our cable to length and get rid of the excess um, that we don't need in this case. I'm just gonna cut my cable there. And at this point, we want to make sure, I'll just stress again, that it's not connected to the battery and our fuses aren't in. So our pack should be there. We don't want power at this point. So I'll we'll just get rid of the excess cable. And we're just going to strip this back. So with a pair of cutters or a little knife, just going to strip a little bit back so that we can separate the red from the black. that insulation so there you go we've exposed our red and black cable now if we strip back a little bit and a good way to get a length on that actually is if we grab our yellow terminals out is to measure so we just want the cable to go in that steel bit so from there to there so if we line that up beside it that's the length of the cable that we want to want to strip back And 
and then preferably using a set of crimpers like these um, would be ideal on our yellow setting with a yellow terminal. Um, if you don't have crimpers like that, a good pair of pliers that's going to crush that down the same is a good option and it's good to just check it at the end. So if we sit those terminals on using the crimper in the yellow, crush that down and just to make sure we have made a good crimp, just give that a pull. Make sure that we've crimped it nice and tight. Crimp it again, another pull. You'll also notice in the pack, not necessary, but just a little bit of cosmetic, is a little bit of heat shrink just to, just to signify positive and negative, just to make it as obvious as we can. So we're putting the red over the red terminal the black over the black terminal and with just a little cigarette lighter um, or a little blowtorch like this one, we can just shrink those down. So I mentioned before, this customer's getting a single socket in here. So that's why we're in this area right now. But I do just want to show you how to attach your dual sockets. So there's a little bit of a trick to make it a bit easier. So you'll see one of our sockets is pre-wired up. We've already got the terminals on and that one can stay done up in its position. So, but what we're going to do with the other one to make it easier is we're going to release this collar, holds it into position there. So thumb on the front, pushing down, will help that collar release a little bit easier. We're going to undo it and that's going to allow us to push that socket outside of the housing a bit and just give us more room to play with and we can move it around to make it easier. So let's go with our positive first. Doesn't matter which one we do first because we, do, we don't have power here or anything at the moment anyway. So you'll see this has a little pigtail on the end of that terminal. So what we're gonna do is put our positive that we've just crimped onto the end of the cable onto that pigtail terminal. So that's like a double adapter. And then we wanna find the positive terminal on the back of here. So you'll see on the back of these pins, it's got a positive symbol, like a plus symbol on that one there and a negative symbol on that one there. So the fact that this is loose means I can flex the positive one up to the top, make it easy to work with. And I'm gonna go ahead and push that onto the terminal. I'll show you once I've got it on, like that. You notice what I've also done is put it facing outwards on the socket. So if I flex it around, I don't want these facing into each other. I'll do the same on the negative. So I can now turn that around, put my negative terminal under here, like that, a bit tight sometimes. And then same thing, I'm going to flex these out. So what I mean is basically when I put that terminal on, I've got the extra terminal facing away from the socket rather than facing in like that, close to the positive. I'm keeping them as far away from each other as possible by doing that. So I'll just put that terminal on. Like so. And once I've got those terminals on, I can go ahead and re-tighten up this socket, pushing it back in with my thumb and doing up that collar. We'll hold it into position. Like so. And now if we were going to mount that, we could just push the excess through the hole, sit our socket into position, and you'll notice it comes with a couple screws too. Using a screwdriver or a screw gun, we would just screw that into position. Okay, so now that we've got our socket sitting into position, push the excess cable through the hole, we can just go ahead and screw it into position. So these screws are supplied in the kit. And once again, wherever you've decided to mount your sockets, um, just make sure there's nothing behind as we screw this into position. 
So now that we've got our sockets all secured and it's all complete, we want to start getting these panels back together. And it's basically the same process in reverse. But if we have a look here, I'll just show you, these are the clips that we're talking about that are, are holding this panel on. So we saw before one stayed in, in that kick panel. Um, so before we go and put it back in, just make sure they're all in position, that there's none stuck in these holes. If there is, just get our side cutters, pop them out and put them back into their location. So once we've done that, they're all in location. We just want to start from one side or the other. It doesn't really matter, but we just want to line these up, make sure that they're going into the hole. And once we sit it into position, You'll see like little locators like that go into a hole. So we just want to line everything up and it's pretty obvious where it goes as you work your way along. So looking through this, I can see where it is. So I'm just going to make sure that's in the hole. This one isn't quiet, so I'm just going to pull it. Yep, it's in the hole, it's in the hole. Once we've seen them all in the hole, it's just a matter of a little tap with our hand is going to reset them. Just getting our grommet out so this this grommet flap stays on the outside of the plastic. So just manipulating that with our hand and that'll let it go home like that. So you can see that's all gone in, push our grommet back up against it and that's how we get our trims back on. So just working our way around now, making sure all these are lining up and just a little tap as we get them and that's how we put our panels back together. Once we've got the back back together, we can put our um, kick panels back together in the rear seats and also the front seats. Once we've done all that, it's time to make the electrical connections on the battery. So we just need to make our electrical connections on the accessory harness. So once again, we're leaving the fuses till the end. So you'll notice no fuses in. Um, but because we're at the battery now, we may want to make the connections to the Red Arc charger at the same time if we've bought this the kit together. Um, so I'll just show you both together. So we'll start by doing the positives. And this battery just came with nuts like these. So I'm going to put the charger on first. And then I'm going to put the accessory harness over top of it. And this battery's come with a flat washer, a spring. So this may vary depending on the type and brand of battery you've got in here. Um, so we'll go ahead and do these up. Nice and tight. Once the positive's tight, we'll move on to the negative. So once again, I'll put the charger on first and the accessory harness over top of it. Flat washer, spring washer, and our nut. I'll do that up. Nice and tight. Once that's done up with our leftover cable ties in the kit, we can go ahead and secure this into position. We can tie our fuse holder down. And now that the electrical connections are made, we can actually go and put our fuse holder in. And check that we've got power in our sockets. So now our fuse, fuse is in. We've got a spare one as well to keep. Um, depending on what, what plugs we've got down the back, we may be able to tell straight away whether we've got power. If you've got a USB, it would light up, um, have a little backlit light on it. Um, if you've got a voltmeter, that would be reading. If you've just got a cigarette socket and angle socket, we would have to plug a device in to check that it's reading. That might be our fridge or an LED light, anything, a phone charger, we can plug into it to see whether it's actually working. So there we go, we've completed the installation. I'm just gonna put a couple cable ties on here to secure it down. And then basically the full installation is complete and we can ready to enjoy camping.